Good requirements tend to have some common characteristics. An important attribute of good requirements is that they are both precise and minimally constrained. By minimally constrained, we mean that they describe what the system should do, but not how the system does it. The how it does it is part of design, not requirements. Part of being precise is that a typical requirement uses the word shall as its verb to require that something happens, or sometimes the word should to state a goal. So if you have a properly formed requirement, typically the verb is going to be either shall or should. Another good precise requirements practice is to have a numeric target instead of a qualitative term. For example, instead of saying the user interface is fast, you might say that there's a response to a user selection within 500 milliseconds, or the period for a refresh is 500 milliseconds plus or minus 10%. Using a tolerance is important, rather than a precise number, to indicate the degree of freedom that designers have in meeting a timing target. A good requirement should be traceable and testable. Each requirement needs a unique label, for example, R-7.3. That label makes it easy to trace the requirement to an acceptance test. In your acceptance test plan, rather than have a complete repeat of the text of the requirement, you can just say, this test checks requirement R-7.3, and you know exactly what the test is for. Each requirement should have a feasible yes-no test. At some point, if you have a requirement, you want to know whether the system actually does it or not. If it's something you cannot test for, that makes it a problem knowing whether your system does what it's required to do. What you'd like to see is that each use case in the system translates to one or more requirements, and those requirements are linked up to tests to make sure that the requirements are actually met. The requirement also needs to be supported within the context of the system. You might say that a particular function has to happen, that's the requirement, but it is often useful to have a rationale or a commentary explaining, now what exactly did we mean by that? Why is this important? How does it interact? The commentary is part of the requirements document, but the requirement should stand alone as long as you understand the background information. Requirements should use consistent terminology. Anytime you use two different words, that raises the question, now did you mean the same thing by those two different words, or are they different things? So a good set of requirements uses the same word to mean the same thing throughout. It's difficult to create a large set of requirements with no conflicts whatsoever. Typically, there are conflicts, and the requirements should provide advice on how to resolve or prioritize the conflicts.